this is number 41, I believe. 49. All right, so the good question is actually, that's the first thing I want to answer, is how do you, what do you know, because they're asking us to first find the standard form of the equation. So to find the standard form of the equation, we have two equations, right? We have a standard form equation, we can write x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k, or we could do y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. So there's two different equations we could, hold on, I'll get to, there's two different equations, guys, we could use. So how do we know which one to use, right? And which one's going to help us find the standard form? So the best thing I'd like to do is just say, just plot what information they're giving you, right? Because remember, when we were doing, uh, we were finding the directrix and the focus, the first thing I asked you is what's squared, the x or the y? When you know the x is squared, it opens up or down. When the y is squared, it opens left or right, correct? So let's go ahead and just graph what we have. So we have a vertex at 0, 2. Then we have a directrix at whatever. I know. Vertex is at 0, 4. So my vertex is at 0, 4. Directrix is at 0, 2. Okay. Well, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, since we now know we have a horizontal, does our graph cr cross the uh, directrix? Yes. No. Goes the opposite, right? No, it's not going to go down because your 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 um, remember your focus is inside your parabola and your directrix is opposite to being outside the parabola, right? Because they're the exact same distance. So we know our graph can't open down, and if it opened to the right or to the left, then it crossed the directrix as well. So the only possible point. For us to do is have and to say that, oh, my, vert, my graph has to open up, right? It's always going to go in the opposite direction of your directrix. And if your directrix is horizontal, then you know your graph has to open up. It can't open left or right. Right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So now, how do we find the value of P? Well, ladies and gentlemen, remember that this distance, I don't know what that is, this distance is the same right here. So this distance, we count what? One, two units. Then we know that this distance has to be two units as well. Right? But since to find my, so remember, this is to your directrix, and this is to my focus, which here is my vertex. So if I'm going up two units to get to my focus, Right? And really, I'd have to go down to units to get to my directrix. When I go up to units to get to my focus, I know now the p value is equal to what? Zero. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the value of p, the value of p, if you want to write this down, write it down. The value of p is the distance from your vertex to your focus. It can be positive, it can be negative. But it's the distance from your vertex to your focus. It doesn't matter if it's vertical or if it's horizontal, it's that distance from your focus to your vertex, or to your vertex to your focus. And then remember, to go from your vertex to your directrix is going to be that exact same distance in the opposite direction. Okay? All right. So now, we know that the graph opens up or down. So which formula am I going to use? X squared or Y squared? X squared. X squared, right? So you do x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. So now let's just plug in what we know. We know the vertex is 0, 4. Remember, it's opposite 0, 4. So uh, we have x minus 0 squared equals 4 times p, which we said was 2, times y opposite of 4, right there. So now, we need to just write this in our standard form. So um, let's say this becomes x squared equals 8 times y minus 4. Just your your property. x squared equals 8y minus 32. Then let's solve for y, right? Because that's, remember, our standard form looks like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So we've got to solve for y. 
So we have x squared plus 32 equals 8y. Um, let's divide by 1 8, or multiply by 1 8, which is the same thing as divided by 8. So therefore I can say y equals 1 8 times x squared plus 32. If you want to write it as y equals x squared divided by 8 plus 4, that's fine, that's fine as well. Okay, but I'll just leave it at that point. Does that make sense? How oh, this is close to that form, right? Your standard form. Okay, so the main important thing, guys, is to first determine what formula you're going to use. And once you know what formula, you just plug in the information that you know. All right? So do you think that helps you? Does that give you enough information for 51? Yes? Why, why do you solve?